Hey everyone, it's me here again, Tia Fan Collector, with another video review. Now, in my last review, I reviewed Transformers War for Cybertron Autobot Sideswipe. If you haven't checked out that review yet, head to my YouTube channel, check it out, along with all my other reviews. But besides that, let's get started. Today, I will be semi reviewing Jetfire. The reason I say semi is because Jetfire is one, a really big dude. Two, a really awesome character, and plus, um, there's a lot of information I want to go over this guy based on his appearance in the original cartoon, and so far, what he's been going through in the War for Cybertron series. So, I will be cutting this into a two-parter, mainly talking about his history and everything, and I will be trying to keep this video somewhere in the early and late 20-minute uh, review, because... Um, whenever I go into the 30 minute reviews, it, um, it just takes up a lot of time on my camera and, um, then it just ends up cutting itself into two parts and I, I don't like it when it does that. I don't like doing that to you guys. So, um, I'm just doing it like this for now and, and much later I will be reviewing the actual review of Jetfire, uh, much later on. But besides that, let's get started. So... Jetfire made his first appearance in the G1 cartoon, as we all know him to be in. Jetfire was originally a scientist in the original cartoon. Him and Starscream were scientists way before the war started. And when they went to another pl distant planet to investigate it, Jetfire got a little too curious about the planet and decided, hey, you know what? Let's go to this planet. Let's investigate it. Starscream had a very bad feeling about this, which we don't really know Starscream for being known for. But Starscream had a bad feeling, didn't want to do it. Jetfire insisted they do. So they went to the planet, and after that, they got stuck in a massive storm. Jetfire was lost for millions of years. And after those millions of years, the war started... And Starscream just had an absolute thrill out of killing Autobots than he did being a scientist. Jetfire, however, was completely absent, so he had no idea what was going on. He was in complete stasis lock. And when the Decepticons finally came to Earth and finally discovered Skyfire, or Jetfire, whichever you want to call him. Some people like to call him Skyfire, others like to call him Jetfire. I like to call him Jetfire because, well, the name just sounds cooler. But, anyways... The Decepticons find him, they revive him because Starscream explains on who he is and how he knows him. Because the minute he sees him, he's just like, oh crap, I remember this dude. We gotta get him awake. Let's go. So when he does wake up, he has no memory of where he is, but he does in fact remember Starscream. Starscream explains to him what happened and what they were doing. He reminds him that they were on a diplomatic mission to investigate the planet that they were on. But unfortunately, he lost control of his scanners, his um, flight simulator, and after that, they they just got separated and never saw each other for an extremely, extremely long time. Being all cut up, he asks where they are and why they aren't on Cybertron. Megatron then comes in explaining that Cybertron has been destroyed by millions of years of war. They were at war, and this is where Megatron lies to him. They were at war for millions of years with the hateful Autobots. The Autobots who want to rule and conquer and enslave the galaxy. While them, the good, peace-loving Decepticons, wanted to bring freedom to Cybertron. They wanted to bring true peace and freedom, while the Autobots wanted to bring law and order. Which is something Megatron wants to do, but hey, you gotta do something if you want to find... A new replacement for Starscream because even Megatron has to know that he can't keep Starscream as his second in command forever. Like, eventually, he's got to get rid of him. No matter how many times he stabs him in the back, eventually, Megatron's going to be like, Yeah, you know what? Starscream, you're out. This guy's coming to. This guy's going to take your place. But he tells Jetfire the horrible lie that the Allbots were the ones who destroyed Cybertron, even though. Uh, it was the Decepticons who destroyed Cybertron. Jetfire believes this lie because, again, he was never there for the entire thing. So, again, he doesn't fully understand what's going on. He just goes along with it and is like, oh, okay, well, I'm with you guys. If you guys are good, then I'll be with you guys. And so he's trying to talk to Starscream and he 
believing that Starscream is still the kind-hearted bot he knew once. Um, he tries talking to him. Starscream at first is really friendly to him, tells him that he does in fact enjoy being more of a warrior than he d ever did a scientist. It's more fun fighting enemies than it is researching other planets. Um, and it seems it seems that things are going pretty good for Jetfire. Um, he believes he's on the right side. So far, he hasn't run into any trouble. He's He believes he has his friends back. He's on a new crew. He So far, life's going pretty good for him. But then, all of a sudden, the Autobots show up. And things just start turning out... Things start taking a turn for the worst. So basically, the Autobots show up, and Jetfire is currently on patrol right now. And after he sees the Autobots and recognizes their logo, he's like, Oh crap, you guys are you guys are the bad guys I heard so much about. I gotta stop you. So, he immediately begins to open fire on the Autobots, which is not good for them at all. So, they immediately transform and start shooting back. And what the Autobots don't realize is that, well, not the Autobots, what Jetfire doesn't realize is he's fighting the good guys. But again, he doesn't realize that because he's been stasis luck for so long, he's convinced that he's working for the good guys. But when the humans get involved and they get in danger, Optimus Prime tries to save them, but Jetfire just shoots him out of the way and then goes to see where the noise is coming from. When he sees the humans, he immediately takes them to Megatron, who then imprisons them, explaining that they are now their prisoners and if they make any futile a chance to escape, they will be terminated, basically killed. And Jetfire's like, wait, I thought you were the good guys. I didn't think good guys kill innocent life forms. These things haven't harmed us at all. Megatron's just like, I don't care. They're with the enemy, therefore they are the enemy. Jetfire is still confused because in his eyes... They were in danger. They were the ones crying for help. So he assumed that they needed his help, which he did. He was kind enough to give them help. What he didn't realize is that he had actually handed them over to the one person who hates humans. And of course, again, he doesn't know this quite yet, but he does come to this realization very soon when they are put in prison. And Jetfire is once again questioning Starscream, but this time about why, like, why were the humans with the Autobots? I thought that the Autobots were the bad guys. And why are we imprisoning them if we're the good guys? Shouldn't we be uh, giving them luxury? Shouldn't we be giving them safety? And Starscream's just like, shut up. There are prisoners now. Deal with it. This is war. This is the real world. And Jetfire is understandably confused. He doesn't exactly know what exactly is going on. And... So far, he's still going along with it, but at the same time, he's just a little, a little confused. And after a while, he just, throughout the whole thing, it's just the Autobots now trying to figure out where the humans are and stop Megatron's evil plot. While Jetfire is behind the sidelines, still trying to figure everything out. But later on, he finally gets a sense of what is actually going on, like... The Decepticons are basically trying to wipe out the Autobots, but not in the way that they should be. He, in his mind, if you're good, you should negotiate with the enemy. The Decepticons are straight up trying to kill the Autobots, while the Autobots are trying to find and save the humans. And here, Jetfire is slowly starting to come to realization on what's actually going on. He's slowly beginning to realize that the Decepticons are the bad guys and the Autobots are the good guys. He's slowly beginning to realize this. So... Being the kind-hearted jet, not Jedi, uh, being the kind-hearted Autobot he is, he immediately realizes that he's on the wrong side. And once Optimus Prime tells him, or not Optimus Prime, once Megatron tells him that um, the Autobots once again are the bad guys, now I'm just going into my own little details here. To be honest, I don't exactly remember a whole lot of the episode because I haven't been really watching the original cartoon as of late. I've been slacking on that, so I'm just trying to remember as much as I can. But um, when he tries to go talk to Starscream, try calls him his friend and everything, 
Starscream straight up says, piss off. I don't like you. We aren't friends anymore. We never were. I don't like Autobots. I hate them. I want to murder them. And this completely makes Jetfire again realize he is on the wrong side. He doesn't understand this, but eventually he does realize he's on the wrong side. So he finally turns his back on the Decepticons and tells them, you know what? Screw you guys. I don't like you. The Autobots have shown more mercy all day than you have to the humans or to them. Screw you. I'm going to the Autobot side. I'm no longer a Decepticon. The Autobots are mine now. Or not his, but he's on the Autobot side. So, just like that, he tosses Megatron to the side, chases after Starscream, who uh, was very rude to him. So, he's like, okay, a little payback's in order. So, he straight up beats Starscream's butt. Like, he is just like, you know what? You picked on me. Now you're going to pay for it. And he then crashes into the ice after he shoots Starscream down. And after that, his, he was said to never have been forgotten. Like, his, sac- his sacrifice will never be in vain. Well, technically it was when the Autobots dug him back up in order for transportation. I mean, they had Omega Supreme for that, or any other literal Autobot there. But no, Jetfire, they wanted Jetfire. He was, uh, he was the transportation Autobot. He did eventually begin to slowly fade out of the cartoon. I'm pretty sure his last appearance was where the Autobots Volcano was about to blow and Jetfire then went up to save any Autobots that went up through the volcano. If you guys remember that episode. If not, please let me know. Um and if ugh. Oh, pardon me, I am very sorry. I am a little tired right now. If you guys remember which episode that was, please let me know. But after that he spent most of his time out of the um like, the continuity of Transformers. Like, he still made appearances here and there, but not his same one as he usually would. He didn't make his same appearance as he always would. So, he spent, I think, the last decade, I believe. Well, maybe not the last decade, but he spent a very long time, extremely long time, out of the picture in his original form. He has now just started um, coming back into his original form in the new War for Cybertron show, And in the newly released War for Cybertron Earthrise series, which I've seen the trailer for that, and I cannot wait for it to come out. That trailer looks so sick. The show itself was absolutely amazing. If you have not seen it yet, go watch it. It is such a good series. I binge watched the whole thing. It was that good. Take my advice. Go watch it. If, If you don't like it, then hey, that's your choice. But if you do, let me know what you thought. But in the original War for Cybertron show, he was now he his look was the same, but his personality and everything was completely different. And I mean, he was not a scientist. He was a straight up warrior. I mean, we never really got any signs that he was a scientist, but he was a warrior with honor, kind of like um, Predacon from Beast Wars. Or not Predacon, Dinobot from Beast Wars. He was a warrior of honor and he believed in the Decepticon cause because mainly because he wanted to get rid of corruption and just bring peace and freedom to Cybertron, which he kind of want I mean not kinda, but he wanted to bring he wanted to do that, but what he didn't realize is that Megatron Um, had a completely different idea for peace and freedom, like more law and order, more like. Um, So he was the straight-up commander of the Seekers, which I have to say is absolutely awesome. Like, come on. Starscream has always been commander of the Seekers. He's always been second-in-command of something. It's nice to see that someone like Jetfire gets the spotlight, and not just a spotlight, but a different... Like, a different station in the Transformers universe. Like, he was just the lone conflicted scientist who, um, who was just like, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just gonna go with it until I figure out what's really going on. And in the War for Cybertron show, in the Siege series, he was still kind of that, but at the same time, 
Oh, oh my dear God, I apologize. At the same time in the Siege series, he was he was a little bit conflicted on what he really wanted after realizing Megatron's true colors. Like, Megatron was not the peace-loving Decepticon that he thought he was. He thought the Decepticon logo meant peace and freedom, when really it meant law and order. And the Autobots were the ones who wanted peace and freedom, not law and order. So, throughout most of the series, Jetfire spends his time... Uh, just being the second in command of the Decepticons and being commander of the Seekers, like he is just straight up, he is straight up awesome. He does have, in fact, a rivalry with Starscream, and uh, oh dear God, I I am serious, I seriously apologize for this, guys. I am very tired right now. Um, so he has a rivalry with Starscream, and that is absolutely really awesome the reason for it is because in the original cartoon they were friends and for a few seconds after he realized he was on the wrong side they become slightly rivals in this show they are rivals like not arch enemy, like not sworn enemy rivals or arch nemesis rivals they're just rivals who don't like each other. Starscream believes that he was in command of the Seekers, then things would be much different. But unfortunately, Jetfire is in command of the Seekers, and Starscream is currently trying to replace him, trying to prove to Megatron that Jetfire is corrupt. Unfortunately, Jetfire is way freaking bigger than him, and towers over him, and not to mention in the beginning of the series... He completely disrespected that dude by chopping his arm off, which was so cool. I absolutely love the effects for the show in that scene where he just slices Bumblebee's arms off, or not Bumblebee's, Starscream's arms off, sorry. He completely slices his arms off, well, just his one wrist, and that scene was just like, wow, that is awesome. Plus, his voice is actually really cool, very nicely done. I don't know the name of the voice actor who did his name i gotta start doing that but whew, this is the my best interpretation of jetfire slash skyfire's voice star scream you will never be leader of the decepticons you will never be second in command of the seekers you are nothing megatron what have you done? He was unarmed. There is no honor in killing senselessly. If a warrior is not armed, you are no longer fighting for a cause. I thought you did. I'm out of here. So that is my best interpretation of Jetfire's voice. Let me know what you think. Um, I honestly do know I need more work on it, but... And he is... His voice is actually very cool. I absolutely, I think it is a really great voice. Like, I think it is a very nice, fresh start from his. I am Jetfire, and I am an Autobot. I will not surrender my freedom to you, Megatron. Goodbye. Which, I have to say that both voices are really good, but I honestly love the new one for him so much better. It is just such a good, fresh, clean start. It is really nice. Everything about this guy is just awesome. We never really got to see him with his armor, but we did get to see him with his blaster, which, my God, that thing at work was sick. And the little blade on his wrist, we don't get that with this figure, but... The blade itself was awesome. It could slice through pretty much almost everything. It sliced through bone. Well, not well, not bone will be. God darn it. It sliced through Starscream's wrist pretty easily. And you can imagine Starscream was not happy with him at all. Not to mention in the trailer, he slices the nose piece off of a seeker who's flying in the air. And that just looks awesome. So... After everything that Jetfire has been through in the series, he is he finally decides that he's out of the Decepticons and he's joining the Autobots again. And they even tell him that 
he even tells the Autobots what actually happened to Ultra Magnus, like how he actually died. And Optimus Prime is taken completely by surprise by this information. He cannot believe that his best friend is dead. He cannot believe it. Like, he... Ultra Magnus was like a brother to him. And, well, of course, he never said that in the show. But he was like a brother to him. And the fact that he's dead is just... It, it, it breaks his... It breaks his little spark. It breaks his Autobot spark. And again, Ultra Magnus was one of his most dearest friends. He was like a brother to him. And he Megatron just straight up killed him in cold blood. And that's something that really upsets Optimus. Now, during the time that the Autobots were trying to escape Cybertron, Jetfire actually teams up. Well, not teams up, but... He actually helps the Autobots escape Cybertron by taking on Starscream. Because Starscream was literally making his way to the Ark to finish off the Autobots. Jetfire comes in and then starts fighting him. And Starscream even says he's going to finish him where the Seekers failed. Like, he, like they did try to finish him off, but unfortunately, they didn't succeed. Now Starscream's like, okay, I didn't succeed the first time. I'm going to try again, and this time, I'm going to kill you. And... Yeah, that that fight. I'm I'm really sad that we didn't get to see that fight. Maybe someone will like do a fight between these two, or maybe I'll do a little stop motion fight with them on my Instagram or TikTok. Who knows? I honestly like really. I honestly love doing stop motion, so maybe I'll do one of those. Oh, maybe I'll do one on my YouTube channel right here. Maybe who knows? Maybe once I'm done my other half of this review, I will do that. But we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, he is awesome. This guy is really cool. I think he's such an awesome figure. He definitely deserves the spotlight again for being one of the coolest characters out of Transformers. He is honestly an awesome dude. He is straight up spectacular in every way. And I just think he deserves all the love and praise that he can ever get. I honestly cannot wait to see what he, what kind of role he'll have in the new Earthrise show. And I honestly cannot wait to see... Oh, come on. <sighs> and if I'm making you tired, I am sorry. <laughs> but I, I cannot wait to see the Quintessons, who are made a small little slight at the end of the trailer. They made a slight appearance in the trailer. I cannot wait to see what those guys look like. That is going to be so awesome. I cannot wait to see what the Quintessons are like. I mean, are they going to come back to Cybertron and take, reclaim their home? Or like in the original cartoon, are they going to be playing as judges? Um, are they going to be playing as judge jury where they're judging people, like executing them or just straight up? Like, are they going to keep them in prisoner or execute them? I know that I, I've never seen judge jury, but I've heard, I've heard of it, but I really cannot wait to see what the Quintessons are like in this series. The Quintessons, I do not have. I wasn't actually thinking about getting them, but after seeing that trailer, I might get them now. I might get the freaking Quintessons. Because that trailer just got me so pumped. But, by uh, honestly, I absolutely love Jetfire. This is actually literally my very first Jetfire figure. I do not have him at all. So that was really cool just to see Jetfire in his packaging, just being all awesome. He is a, an awesome dude. I love this guy. This is my very first version of him. So being able to have a Jetfire that's very accurate to the cartoon is, it, it is really epic. I, I, I honestly love it so much. I love this dude so much. I, whenever I get a new toy, like a new Transformer or something, um, Instead of just putting it right in the shelves like I'm pretty sure most collectors do, I straight up keep it out for as long as I can and play with it a lot. Like, I'm straight up playing with this thing, like, so much. I, and hey, that is just my inner kid. That is just our inner kids talking right there. But anyways, guys, that's all for this review. We are 24 minutes into the review, so I think I will end it now. Again, I will get into the actual review um, later on. So... I will definitely release the second part of this uh, the week after next week. 
So anyways, guys, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this guy. Let me know what you think of his history. And did you think I rambled on for too long or did you just want to see me do the review? If so, please let me know if you got bored of this anytime and let me know if I made you tired with my yawning. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you all have an amazing day and have an amazing night or day, depending on where you are. Never stop being a kid. Do what you love and have fun. And for crying out loud, never stop playing with toys. Toys are awesome. If you don't play with toys, then what are you doing with your life? If you're not being a kid, what are you doing? Give in to that inner kid of yours. Give in to that inner excitement that wants to get out and burst with joy. But <laughs> anyways, guys. <clears throat> until, I, until next time. Till all are one. Oh, and tell your friends and family as well. <laughs> Almost forgot that part. <laughs> tell your friends and family. But anyways, yeah. See you guys later.